Hey, this is Brent with Likens Motorsports. This is a uh, Ford FE tunnel port motor that we're doing, uh, 465 cubic inches. We are going to be, on this episode, we're going to be checking piston and valve clearance and uh, measuring for push rods. So this is a hydraulic roller engine. We've got our Morel hydraulic roller lifters. Our heads are already assembled, and we're going with TND rockers for, for this one. So, um, TND rockers use ball end push rods. So, we're going to be ending up with a ball ball push rod. Um, these also oil through the push rods or the heads, but in on this particular engine, we're going to be oiling through the push rods. So, um, we're going to be checking piston and valve clearance. We're going to be checking push rod length. So I'll ask this question up front. Um, for checking piston and valve clearance, what kind of lifter do you need to use? You need to use a solid lifter or a hydraulic lifter that's been modified so that the plunger does not move. If the plunger can move, then as soon as this rocker arm starts to go down and you've got spring load against it, push rod is going to push the plunger down. You're not going to get as much lift at the valve as what you think you have. So, solid lifter or a modified hydraulic lifter to check piston and valve clearance. Okay, I'll ask this question. What setup do you need to use to measure for push rod length? You need to use the rocker arm that you're going to use. The heads need to be bolted on with the gasket that you're going to use. You need to be using the lifter that you're going to use. So we're going to go all over all of that as we move on here. And um, first order of business, I got our TNDs all snug down and. Um, we get our push rod length checker out. What I would like to do is I keep uh, a pretty good healthy stock of push rods. So if I can measure from here to there, and uh, actually I need to practice what I preach, right? I need to put a, a lifter pair in that uh, won't compress. But once we do that, I can measure from here to here, get my push rod length measurement, and hopefully find a push rod in the box um, that will that will go from here to there without much fuss. <laughs> These are adjustable rocker arms, and um, T and D recommends that your adjuster setting ends up. Uh, you back these all the way out. You turn it one full turn in, and that's where you start with your initial push or uh, initial adjuster. Um, position and then you can measure your push rod length and and then add your preload to it for your hydraulic lifter so uh, instead of muddying up the waters let's get busy and uh, see what we can, what can come up with all right so I was able to get a measurement here and uh, we ended up with a, a, a 9 100 length push rod and I know that you're asking what if I don't have a box of push rods laying around? Well, let me explain um, the best case scenarios here. So if you use a checking spring and a push rod length checker, you can do that. Just understand that you will get more lift at the valve with a checking spring than you will with a real spring. There's two reasons for that. First, you take out all of the uh, the load in this system. So you're removing all the deflection due to forces being enacted upon uh, the push rod and or acted upon the push rod and the rocker arm. The second thing is that most rocker arms are built with extra ratio in them to counteract deflection with spring load so if i were to put a checking spring on here just 
for instance, say, uh, for example, say this is a 500 lift cam. If I put a checking spring on, roll the engine over, put my dial indicator here and measure the lift, I would get way more than 500 lift at the valve because there's nothing pushing back on the rocker arm and um, there's nothing to deflect it as it's being rolled through. So you're getting the full design of that rocker arm ratio. So in, in actuality, this is a 175, 176. Uh, the ratios are made a little bit higher on a lot of rocker arms to counteract deflection in the system. Um, I've only seen one rocker arm that was not made like that, and that is uh, Jay Brown's rocker arms for his new heads. So he did not engineer any uh, system deflection into the rocker arm. So what you get at the valve is your lift uh, minus any deflection in the system. So you can use a checking spring, just know that you will probably get more lift at the valve than what you should get. Um, you can also put a lighter valve spring on here and use a, a, a good push rod length checker. Here is what I would consider a good push rod length checker. They don't have just a little spindly uh, thread in there. They got some meat to them. So you can sometimes use those with a, uh, a light spring and it, it won't uh, you know deflect or buckle with you. So um, before you guys got here, um, I put some clay on the valve reliefs of the pistons. We've got our head gasket on because our pistons come out of the hole a little bit and you don't wanna lock the piston up when it hits the head. So I've got a head gasket, cylinder head. Um, I've also marked, and you've also probably noticed that um, these are not as loose as they should be. So once I'm done with all this, I'm gonna chuck these spacers up and cut some off of them so that we can have some, a little bit more uh, freedom there. But I've also marked the valve tips so I can check geometry. First, look, they look pretty good. So I'm gonna go with that and see what we come up with. So we got our push rod on here. I'm gonna roll this over and watch the valve go down. That'll compress our clay. I'm gonna do it one more time. And then I can switch to the intake rocker, go through the same procedure, and then we can pull our head off and check it. Another pointer before you get all this set up, you need to have whichever one that you're checking, you want that lifter to be on the base circle. So I'm checking the intake. This is the same procedure that you would use as setting the valves. So um, I'm, I'm checking the intake one this time. So I'm gonna roll the engine over until that exhaust lifter is coming up this ensures that this lobe is on the base circle and then i can get my push rod in here and uh, set up here's the results of our geometry test <laughs> sounds like i'm back in high school um a very thin pattern near the center of the valve stem so we are good to go on that i'm not going to change that at all and uh, we're going to roll with that so now i want to get the head off and we'll check our clay. All right, I can already tell we're gonna be in good shape, uh, both radially. So I've got this distance from here to the valve relief, from here to the valve relief, we're good radially. On this side, you can see this mark where the valve comes down. So we got plenty of room there. I'll measure that here in a second. And we've got plenty of depth clearance over this dish. So let me get a razor blade We'll section through some of this so we can see more clear what's going on and we'll take some measurements. 
Okay, so when you slice through it, you get a better idea of what's going on. We're not really concerned about this area down here. We're concerned about this step up right there. So if I take my calipers and touch that clay, 189 thousandths for our intake side. Yep. And then measure about the same for the exhaust side. And then we can take a measurement of our radial clearance. So about 190 thousandths there. About a hundred there. So we were in excellent shape. I have ran uh, radial clearances as tight as about 35, 40 thousandths. So we are in excellent shape here. And uh, next step is to get the clay cleaned off, uh, the real head gaskets on. We're gonna bolt the heads on real quick. Then we're gonna change out our BAM solid roller lifters for the actual lifters that we're gonna be using. And we're gonna take some push rod lengths and I'll show you how to do that. I got our heads torqued on and now we're up to measuring for push rods. So we're going to do the intake first. You roll the engine over, remember, the Evo method, you set the intake when the exhaust lifter or valve is opening and there it's, it's going up. So our lifter's in the right spot, our rocker arms are bolt, bolted down, our adjuster is in the correct spot. It's, I loosened the adjuster nut, backed this all the way out, turned it one full turn in, locked it down. So everything is in the position that it needs to be in. Um, we need a push rod length checker with a 5 16 ball on the lifter end and a 5 16 ball on the rocker arm end. So we're going to just unwind this, unscrew it. Let me get here where I can see what I'm doing. So easier said than done. Let me put the camera down and uh, get this thing wound out. All right, so here we are. And I just unscrewed it so that we make contact on each end. You don't have to put any pressure on it. You just touch, touch, and that's it. So that is the length of push rod that we need. We're gonna have to add in our lifter preload of 50 to 60 thousandths. So we're gonna leave this the way that it is. I'm gonna un bolt our rocker arm stand nuts get this up out of the way where i could pull this push rod length checker out and then measure it with a set of all right so we are at eight four sixty pull up my old ragged calculator here i want to add uh, sixty thousandths of preload so we're at eight, five, 20. Uh, trend usually wants us to do increments of uh, 25 thousandths. So we'll say eight, five, two, five on eight, five, two, five on the intake side. So we'll take a measurement of the exhaust side and uh, check it out and see how close it is. So what do we do? Remember, Evo and IVC. So set the intake when the exhaust valve is opening, set the exhaust valve when the intake valve is closing. So we're gonna go up, that's the exhaust going up. Here comes the intake going up and it's starting to go back down. So that means exhaust lifter is on the heel of the lobe. 
want to tighten our stand nuts back up. You don't know how many times I've made the mistake of um, checking it with those nuts loose. And I just happened to see me unscrewing the push rod length checker and watching the rocker arms raise up at the same time. So I never said I was a smart man. So screw this back in and then screw it back out. Again, I'm going to put the camera down. And we'll get this touching and then measure it and add our preload. Okay, for the exhaust side, we are at 8490. 8490 plus 60. 8550. That's within our uh, 25 increments. So that's what I'm going to order. Uh, I'm going to order 8 at 8525 and 8 at 8550. We're going to do 5 16 105 wall. Uh, just because tunnel port tubes are generally pretty close on clearance uh, with hot, with roller lifters. So that'll be that'll be uh, what my order to trend will be this evening. And since we got our push rod links, I went ahead and uh, filled it full of oil. We got about 85 pounds on the gauge, which is good. And uh, I'll check it again, obviously, when we get the push rods in to make sure all of our rockers are oiling. Didn't have the chuck tight on my drill. It's not as tight as what I thought. And uh, hit about 80 pounds and then it freewheeled. And then I proceeded to poop my pants because I thought something had broken in the oil pump. Um, but it was just the drill. So we're in good shape. So I hope this has uh, helped you guys to see uh, what goes into how to set up uh, your, your push rods when you're checking for length and how to check for piston to valve clearance. We are slowly but surely moving along with this build. Uh, the intake is being cut right now. So as soon as we get our push rods in, then we can get uh, intake on, water pump on, um, valve covers carburetors we got new carburetors from air fuel spark a pair of uh 710s i think 715s and uh we're in good shape with that so making progress all right guys hope this helped you out a little bit uh let me know in the comments if it did i'm thinking of doing an uh ask the engine builder uh kind of a live deal this weekend um just get on the get on youtube have a live session where you guys can ask questions and i can answer them in real time let me know what you think of that maybe we can make that happen hope you guys are having a good week hit that subscribe button talk to you soon